to another election, the Democratic Republic of Congo's. Authorities there say violence in the eastern region has delayed the start of campaigning. The Ebola outbreak in North Kivu has also affected campaigns as medical teams struggle to contain the virus. Another day, another attack in DRC's Beni district. For residents of Beni, North Kivu province, this is all too familiar. Elections are barely a month away, and yet there is no sign of campaign teams soliciting for votes. Rather, what has been left behind is a trail of destruction by militias. Insecurity affects everyone in the population. As you can see, shops, health centers, pharmacies have been looted. There is no more activity at the moment. They usually come to kill people. They come, they burn down houses, after which they steal goods. They also kidnap children. In other parts of the country, campaigns are in top gear. Here in the East, militias have made it impossible for any campaign to go on. But it's not just violence that the eastern region is grappling with. Villagers are afraid of the Ebola outbreak. It's been active since August this year. Efforts by medical teams to counter the spread of the disease continue being hampered by militias. With regard to training, the Sayo district population did not have any sufficient information on Ebola. There have never been sessions here to raise awareness. As for the NGOs, you saw MSF, and it was only today that they arrived. There are no other NGOs except Medea, who came here to make a triage area at the entrance of the health center. There is no other NGO that has come to support us or to raise any awareness. In our neighborhood, as I said, the population is afraid of Ebola because it is a dangerous virus. It can kill everyone in one soup. So if you can help us so that the vaccine arrives soon, we can help infected people. Their violent campaigns have not spared even peacekeepers. Last week, eight of them were killed, including one Tanzanian and seven Malawians. Elections in the DR Congo are scheduled for December 23rd. Whether they will take place in the eastern region remains unclear. Noel Makugu, CGTN. Well, for more on this, we are now joined by Kasim Kayira, a regional political analyst in our Kampala studios. Thank you for joining us, uh, Kasim. Campaigns have kicked off in the DRC amid concerns of security and the Ebola outbreak in the eastern region. Do you think the Eastern DRC is ready for the polls? What impact do you think it will have on the electoral process? Now, whether they are ready for the poll, I think, is a question. Uh, but definitely with the insecurity and the Ebola, like you have mentioned, it makes it very difficult for there to be a free and fair election. The election will go ahead without a doubt, but whether it will be free and fair. The campaigns have not happened and therefore it makes it really difficult. But I think the most important thing is that for the first time, President Kabila is not going to be on the ballot paper and that is quite crucial. Even in an area where he had a lot of support, many people just want to see the change. And therefore it looks like it will take everything that they can do to ensure that at least they can cast their votes uh, within the areas that they are in. But don't forget the fact that you have 2.5 million people who are internally displaced, and then you have more than a million who are also refugees outside the country. That definitely would affect now the, the, the quality and the, and the quantity of the number of people who would turn up now to carry out the vote. So there's uh, obviously it's, it's going to be difficult to make it free and fair, as you say. Distrust still appears to weigh on the electoral process, with the opposition expressing concern over voting machines and voter registration. Has the government done enough to provide a level playing field for the candidates, do you think? Well, I think the question would even be, has the government had enough time to do that? We've had elections postponed since 2016, uh, and then we were expecting 2017, then we've ended up in 2018. The government has, ha has not had enough time. Either the Senates of the National Electoral Commission, which was supposed to have carried out even civic education, provided the, the kind of confidence that was required to ensure that people now would be sure 
that whatever the machines have been very controversial but the government has gone ahead spent a lot of money on them but whether now they'll be able to reach out even in those particular areas where we are talking about insecurity and cases of Ebola then that actually leaves a lot to be desired I don't think the government has had enough time whether it has had the goodwill to be able to do that that's another thing but they've not had enough time remember the moment we got from the Electoral Commission the confirmation of the date for the elections was hardly five months ago. That didn't really provide enough time for the government and the Electoral Commission to be able to provide the confidence uh, measures that we are required to allow people to believe in the process. So I think most people are going into the election because they want to see some, some kind of election, whether it's, uh, it, it's the, the ruling party candidate who comes in and wins, or whether the opposition can master a win under the, these current circumstances. All that people want to see is the fact that they would be seeing somebody else taking the oath of office come uh, next year. Let's talk about the key issues. What do you think are likely to shape the country's campaigns? Top on these is, uh, is security. I mean, everywhere you go, that's the question that you really talk about. But when you get to Kinshasa, for example, the capital, you don't get a feeling, you don't get a, a full sense of the insecurity that, for example, is in the east of the country. But top on the agenda will definitely be security or the lack of it, because most people now feel insecure. I've just spoken about the internally displaced people and the refugees outside the country. These people would wish to go back to their country. They cannot in the current circumstances. So whoever takes over now will be taking a situation where they have to deal with guaranteeing security for people. You have the cases of rapes. You have kidnaps that are happening. Right now, many militia groups now uh, lost a lot of income uh, because of the, 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 the regulation of the minerals that many of them were selling out of the country. Now, because of that, many now have gone into rudimentary measures of raising capital. And that is, for example, through kidnaps to get ransom. That is happening with entirely, you know, many, many groups. You have about 40 militia groups, my my groups alone. And then you have the ADF up north and, and in the east. And that is causing a lot of havoc. So definitely security will be top of the agenda in terms of whoever comes in, they have to guarantee and assure people that Congolese who have been independent for more than 50 years, but 50 years of pain, that they can finally have some kind of peace. The okay. second thing, of course, will be infrastructure. You get to Kinshasa, for example, where you think life is good, but you find life is very, very expensive. Food has to be imported, say, from South Africa and across the river or even elsewhere as far as France. Uh, therefore, whoever you know, sort of comes in must be able to provide some kind of assurance. Yet, if you had infrastructure that could connect just the east with Kinshasa, things would be much cheaper. You have a lot of food that is rotting in the east, and they can't find the market down in Kinshasa where it is very expensive. And finally, I think the, the, the economy in general, the economy will be at the heart of it because many people now have been affected. The taxes, the kind of informal sector is sort of running the economy. You have militias running their own sort of mini government or pseudo government. You have government officials who are collecting money and not getting it into government coffers. So definitely there has to be a level of reorganization of the economy. And that, I think, can start creating some sense of stability. Uh, other things now can come off the back of that, especially the role of women in this particular election will be very crucial. The, the population of women is quite high. They are the ones who have suffered most. The women and children have suffered the most. And if they have the moment now to be able to change anything, probably this is their moment, if they can, that is. Okay, thank you very much for your analysis. That was Kasim Kayira there, a regional political analyst in our Kampala studios, talking about the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo's upcoming elections.